You're listening to the Mobcast Network. Uh, hey everybody, how y'all doing? Woo! Uh, welcome to Independent Comic Book Publishing. Yay! Yay! Uh, I see a bunch of eager young minds out there a little interested in uh, independent comics, because independent comics are amazing. I'm a huge fan, I love independent comics. And so we have some uh, great talents with us today, so I want to let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm, uh, I'm Barry Gregory. I've uh, been working in comics since uh, since the early 90s. I sold my first scripts to Malibu Comics when I was in college. Um, and now I'm one of the uh, co-owners of Plan Digital Printing. Yeah, my name is Thomas Formonti. I'm the other co-owner of Plan <laughs> Digital Printing. I've been doing comics 20 some odd years and stuff. The first thing I had to publish not itself was through a work I got called Scum of the Earth. Oh, look. Uh, actually, Christina's not going to be here. Okay. So, either somebody else can see her or. I'm down the yeah, so, yeah, That's me. Hey, everyone, sorry, I'm here. No, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. Okay. She doesn't like it, but I, 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 everyone else is cool. <laughs> Uh, we were just introducing our, our guest. Uh, Go we'll ahead, keep going. <laughs> Come back to me. And... I, I was kind of good. <laughs> 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 no, just the, the first thing I ever had published, you know, what I did because I was hired to do was before I started publishing my own stuff, was a book called Scum of the Earth. Way back. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Joseph, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm Joseph Michael Lynchner. Me. Um, I do a comic book called Dawn. Uh, we started off with a comic book called Cry for Dawn. And that came out in uh, 1989. It was a self-published comic book. And uh, since then, I've worked for just about every publisher on the planet, comic publisher. And uh, this year is Dawn's 30th anniversary, so I'm planning on doing lots of new dog stuff. Well, congratulations again for the 30th anniversary of Dawn. Thank you, thank you. Dawn thanks <laughs> And at the end there, can I, I actually have a question. Who's, oh. gonna, who's gonna publish that new Dawn stuff? Uh, yeah. Image Comics. Image. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, good. Nice. Yeah, for the past uh, 10 or 11 years, Image has been handling uh, all the Dawn comic books, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. Yeah, there was close to being self-publishing, being a self-publisher as, uh, as as anybody can find in the market right now. I mean, every every other company has its you know pluses and minuses. Like one of the downsides with Image is that they really don't do a lot of press. They don't really do a lot of uh, publicity for your stuff. But I'm fine with that because I'm used to doing that being a self-publisher. Yeah, but you know if I was to go with Dark Horse, Dark Horse gets 50% of all third-party licenses. And I've already had, you know, card set deals, uh, statue deals. I already have all these other third-party things lined up. I don't need someone to find me. So with Image, it's like, you guys take care of the comic books, I'll do the rest. I'll, do, I'll take care of the card sets and the statues and all the other stuff. So Image actually works really nice. And you get that Image icon, which does help on, on the rack. Yes, right there. yes. So. All right, I guess I should introduce myself. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Kelly Yates, and I'm probably actually best known for my Doctor Who work, actually, doing a lot of covers and illustrations. I actually have a toy line out uh, of Doctor Who that I created that I work with the BBC on. Um, but other outside of that, and create our own stuff. Uh, I've actually created two books. One's called Amber Atoms, and it was published through Image Comics back in 2008, 2009. Uh, I love working. It's kind of basically a female Flash Gordon, uh, but it was a victim of the recession back in 2008 when everything was just nose diving. So. I mean, everything's being slashed and half Spider-Man, X-Men, and everything, so it's kind of a big one that. Um, and I'm going to revisit that. It was kind of funny because when that came out, I was actually contacted by a producer in Hollywood, and they were trying to get Miley Cyrus attached. Yes, oh, really? You know, she's great. You can laugh now, but if she was freshly coming off of Hannah Montana and looking for something to do, some type of space thing. It didn't happen, obviously, but had a little thing. And then, uh, so that came out through Image, and also another thing I'm slowly working on, I've got like four chapters now, it's called Monster, M-O-T-H-E-R, and uh, I'm doing that self-published, kind of through digital first, through Artist Alley Comics, through Comicsology. Uh, when I get all eight chapters done, I'll probably put it out. I don't know if through Kickstarter or what, but I'll, I'll collect it all into, into one volume, so. And I'm your moderator, Scotty, so we're gonna ask a few questions, and then we'll get to audience questions, too. Um, it seems like nowadays, 
Um, we're in a, an interesting renaissance with comics, uh, especially with the internet. The internet ha allows almost everyone just to put stuff out there. So what are your thoughts about that? I think it's wonderful. Um, I think if I was just starting off right now, I would definitely probably start with a webcomic. Um, one of the tough things with publishing uh, a comic book is you need to come up with the printer bill. And, you know, to get things online, it's free. You know, you just need to put the work into creating something. And uh, I, know, I know the future of everything lies in uh, downloads, but I've been resisting with Dawn because I, I hate reading things on a screen. But uh, this year, I'm, probably, I'm finally going to get some stuff on comic comicology and give it the program because uh, I know it's inevitable. You know, I, you know, it's just, uh, it's just the next evolutionary step. You know, you can't fight it. Well, and, that, and that's true. I mean, comicology has been around for anyone not familiar with comicology. It's a, it's a website where you're allowed to download comics. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And, and you're right, it, you know, from us, for a generation who grew up buying stuff off the racks, it's a lot different when you're, when you're reading it on your Kindle or your tablet or on your computer. It's, it's, it takes a little bit to get used to, so I totally understand the resistance to it. Because there's something, there's something great about having a good floppy in your hand. You know, just, there's a good and, and actually, just uh, with my eyes, the way uh, I, I experience an image that is illuminated from behind, like on a computer screen or on a tablet, versus on paper, I actually find it much more soothing. On paper. Oh yeah, totally. Good. I understand. Um, but yeah, we, you know, there, there's a, there's a lots of things out there for, for that. Not just like say, uh, not just with comics but uh, there's, you know, comics are now on Tumblr. There's a bunch of web comic apps now that are just out there. Just a lot of interesting stuff out there. Um, so, well, I, I was going to say uh, for digital and everything, I've always loved like the print book. But for digital, now, I can actually make a little bit of money. Um, you know, it's more of a split difference uh, versus like printed. I think. Back in the day, you had to print somewhere around six to seven thousand copies just to break even, yeah. and then anything above that, you made a percentage off of, and everything. And you know, unless you're that top tier Robert Kirkman or whatever, sometimes you know, not a lot of books don't hit that six to seven thousand. So with this new digital format now, you know, at least you know when you sell one copy, you know, depends on what your contract is, you might get fifty percent of them. So if it sells for three bucks, you get a buck fifty. Just right, if they're making money. Possibly right at the very right, beginning. Yeah, right. yeah. Digital, there, there's actually, I'd, I'd like to make a distinction. There's actually two kinds of digital comics. There's the digital downloaded comic, and then there's the digitally printed comic. Yeah. It's, yeah. Print on demand is, you know, that's, that's what we do all the time. It's more, it's more viable now than, it, than it's ever been. And this idea that you have to print six or seven thousand doesn't hold anymore. You can, you know, you can, you can, you can have your book printed on demand, and you're making money on the very first copy. Now you're, you're not going to pay all the, the, the labor that it took to make it on the first copy, but you know you don't have that that bill for six thousand copies before you can see a dime from it, and that's what you're seeing money right off the bat. So actually, Barry, let me ask you: with the digital printing, uh, in terms of quality, it just keeps getting better and better from what I see out there. Um, have the prices dropped? Is it getting more affordable? Um, on, yeah, on various things. It, it's, it still is. I mean, I mean, that's that's one of the trade-offs that we have to make is in the economies of scale. Because when you've got, you know, when you've got the big high commercial offset presses running, the more they run, the cheaper the unit cost becomes. Because you know, the, the whole cost is in the setup. So once it's set up and it's running, it, the price just keeps dropping on the unit. The trade-off of digital printing is, is that, like I said, the economies of scale. The, the cost is the cost to produce, not the set. And so if I'm printing 2,000 units of a book, that 2,000th unit costs the same, from a producer's point of view, costs me the same as the first unit. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's not the, the scaling that you get with, with commercial offset. So, so yeah, your per unit cost on that first book and the, the 2,000th book is still going to be a lot higher than if you printed six to seven thousand books. But you're making money on the first sale. Yeah, that's that's the trade off. But the great thing I'm here to say is there's options now. There are. That's, so that's the great yeah. thing. Whether you want to get a full digital or digital printing, there's options. Well, you should well, be the comics. I I was making I was I was publishing independent comics for ten years before I ever saw my work in color. Okay. Today, somebody can do their very first book if they print it digitally 
think it's starting color, you know, full process color from the get-go. That seemed like a pipe dream when I started, you know. So. Um, I was just going to bring up the, uh, the color option. Uh, when I first uh, heard about, you know, what it might actually cost to print a comic, it was 1987. And I met some terrible artist who was printing out a comic book. And he uh, told me it cost $1,500 to print up 5,000 copies of a black and white comic with uh, a black and red cover. And I was working in an auto parts warehouse at the time, because I just got out of high school, and uh, I was making around $150 a week. So I figured, okay, I could save up for that. I can afford you know, $1,500. Uh, but to do something in color would have been you know, astronomical. That was completely, couldn't even think about doing something in color. But black and white seemed possible. Yeah. Whereas, like you said right now, it's affordable for someone Right. You know, so I, I didn't I didn't do a color comic until I was doing comics for like seven or eight years, and that was like ah, you know, it was like moving to the big screen. It was like going from TV to, to like cinema scope. You had, you had to you had to have you had to have the colors separated. You had to have you know you had to have uh, you had to have the, the plates in the film, and, and those guys charge those comics you know, had to have a minimum a minimum you know print by hundred thousand copies. You can, you, now we can just print one. Yeah, if that's all you need. Yeah, so there's, there's, and then the turnaround time is a lot quicker now than doing it the other way, where you've got weeks and weeks and weeks before you get the first thing. You know, now, you know, if things go properly, you can turn a book around in a couple of days. If it's, you, know, you don't have to wait so long. So, it may pay a little more, but it's much quicker. So that's another. Yeah. So. You know, I, uh, the people here who are interested in making comics. So, let's say I've. I've got the idea, I've got a story, I've got a script, I've got an artist, or I am the artist, and I've got, I've got something kind of put together now, and I'm, I'm ready to look for that next step. What would you recommend, and how would you go for it? Um, so are you saying, uh, do they have a book drawn, or do they... Well, let's say the book is drawn. Let's, let's say we're, we're at that stage, so we're, we've, got the, we've got a book finished. Okay. Um, well, shopping it around for a publisher, or, or doing it yourself, shopping around a publisher. I mean, just different ideas. I, mean, I, I would, I would want to move back a little further in the process. Okay, sure. Um, because you know, in, we we see a, we see a lot of books from a lot of different people every day, but we see the same problems over and over. And the main problem that we see over and over again is that people start creating without uh, without the end product in mind. So they're not taking into account the technical specifications that you need to produce a book. You're not taking into account the formats and the, and the page ratios and things like that. And people think that once they got the book done, that it just can magically be produced. And it's like, well, no, your pages are all different sizes and they don't fit into the templates and are they have double you know, these prints that are on that the start on the even page and flow to the or start on the odd page and flow to the even page. I see that all the time. Uh, the yeah. first issue of Cry for Dog, we were going to do a 36 page comic. Yeah. And then once we talked to the printer, we kind of can't do 36, you can do 32 or 40, you know? Yeah. So we learned that one right out of the gate. Like, okay. You gotta know a little bit about how the books yeah. are put together and everything when you're when you're <laughs> You know when you're actually drawing it and everything, yeah, but how it's going to print is like you know it's four pages at a time, even though it's one sheet of paper folded in half. You still can't just have three pages and say, I want a three page book. It's like, no, there's a fourth page on that back side, you got to have something. No, I only want three. My book no, is 21 pages. No, your book is 24 pages. No, it's not. It's 21. <laughs> you know, you got to call it three more pages. You gotta, no, 22, 23, and 24 no. exist whether you want them yeah, or not. You can leave them blank if you want, but you're. But yeah, the those, those, are, those are the things that I wish people in the very early stages of collaborating on, on a comic would take into account, is how am I going to get this in front of an audience? Am I just going to do it on the web? Okay, well then, yeah, fine, you don't have quite the considerations that you do if you're working for print. But if you're working for print, there's specific, you know, um, on, not, on uh, the Kaplan website, do you have like an idiot's guide to how to do a comic book? Well, we don't basic, call it. <laughs> but, 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 you should, though. You really we, should. We, 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 we've, we've, got, we've got templates for several different formats, and we try to explain what a live area is, what a margin is. What, and what, do you talk about the page counts? Like, you can't do it for the page count? Yeah, we talk about page counts, those okay. kinds of things. Now, if but, but most people, by the time most people get to that, they've already started producing. Right. 
you know, so that, that's why I say I wish before you, you know, people actually get into the production process, you know, they'd, they'd sit down and, and, and look at it mathematically. You know, now, what have we got to do with the numbers? First, engineer that old war for digital thinking about printing is when I was working with comicsology. They want me to take an 11 by 17 page or 10 by 15, whatever, and actually split it in half. So the first top half, you would see full screen on the iPad. The bottom half, you would see on the iPad. But when you put it together, it'd be one complete page. Great idea, but then it really limits you sometimes on how you design a page. Because sometimes you might want a page to go. So there's limitations, but you still have to think through not only if you do want it in both formats, so it's digital and print, you got to think it through a little bit, even a little bit more than that. So we're on top of that, I guess, on top of just the end product. So much, right? <laughs> so one, one, of, one of the things that I, that, I would, that I would really like to see, and I, I, I lose this argument every time I bring it up there, is I think we ought to have it like a temporary moratorium on double page spreads. Because a double page spread is great in print, print, but if you're reading a comic digitally, it, it just yeah, it was it's the experience. Because you know, so, you your, your, your so just do single pages until we figure out, you know, I think until it's we get the new technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting one. Don't worry about it. It flips out now. This oh, they got the one that bends. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Your, uh, <laughs> no, I don't mean the bendable iPad. That's something like that you've seen the new Samsung now. Yeah. I've seen it. I was actually just going to bring up uh, there was a company in the early uh, 2000s called CrossGen that they came and went, but one of their big goals was to ultimately be the premier uh, digital comic book source. And after their first couple issues, they started having all their artists do everything as double page spreads, so it would look better on a computer screen. And they didn't think about tablets or cell phones like that. Yeah. That technology was like many years down the road. So, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's funny that you're... you're yeah. I remember comics on the way up, you know. Mm -hmm. Because you know, you're, you're, you're reading on the screen, screen yeah, yeah, the horizontal work, but then the iPad came out and just kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Coming from the artist side, I always just love to draw double page spreads all the time, and it's now it's like, since, you know, we're, we're printing everything, and now I don't draw double page spreads anymore. It just doesn't, you know, it, it, it's for the digital part, you know, it's gonna, it really, when you, when you take a double page spread, you know, run it sideways on it, iPad, it just now all of a sudden that you get the, you know what I'm saying, where it, where it squeezes in the picture and you got to slide it back and forth, it just doesn't work. So then you've got to zoom in to see what you're looking yeah. at. Yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, I completely lose the argument. No, I, no, I, 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 think, I think it's a great idea. I still do full page spread. It's a full page, you know. You need a good spot, you know, a good splash page for, for, for some great action. I, I think it's great, but yeah, I totally agree with you. As someone who reads on his tablet, I think, I mean, that makes totally sense. Totally good. Yeah. Uh, so, um, moving on a little bit before we open up the, the audience, uh, I'm really curious about you two and how you started Kablam and how, what, how did that kind of, what, what decided you, like, let's move to this direction. Why we started to print? Why did we start Kablam? Because we were getting books printed elsewhere and they weren't coming through with what we were, <laughs> our orders, basically. We had another printer that we were mm -hmm. using to do small runs like what we needed for shows and stuff like this. So we, 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 talked, we talked for a while about it because I, I came from a, I had a background as an editor and Thomas had a background in, in newspaper production, so you know, we had kind of both ends of it. Besides being comic creators right. before that, you know. And so, uh, we, we, we talked about it casually for a couple of years, and then it came to a point where it's like, okay, we, we got to get some books printed. Are we going to are we going to go to somebody else, or are we going to really try to do this? No, ourselves? we went to a show, and my books, books I got my books, and they buried sitting yeah. next to me with nothing <laughs> because it, the, the printer that we were using didn't come through, and we're like, well, let's go over, let's see what we can do so, about getting a printer. Yeah, so we we. We did our, I, had, I had investigated digital printing a little bit when I was an editor in the late 90s. Uh, you know, and, and every month when we'd get our, our orders in from Diamond, and, you know, we'd have a big cry and you know, try to decide what we're going to do next. And we, we, we talked about the idea of, of maybe digital printing, but the technology just wasn't there in the 90s. And, uh, and so this was around 2005 that Thomas and I were, were, were kicking around the idea. So we, we, we did our homework, we, uh, we investigated a, a lot of different presses, talked to a lot of different people, and when we finally found, you know, we kind of wrote a little business plan, we kind of finally figured out what we were going to do, 
the original plan was we were just going to get something and we're going to print books for ourselves and a few of our friends and you know. It, it is still giving, you, you've seen all the printers out there. There's a lot of stuff that can print color, but it doesn't look like a comic. So our whole thing was it still needed to print and look like a comic traditional print. So, you know, you couldn't go with something too cheap, but you know, we didn't want to go too expensive because we couldn't afford to buy that equipment. So we, of course, as it turned as it turned out, we, that's what we had to do. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that in order to really you know produce comics the way we wanted to produce to make them them look we realized right that we were going to have to start a business and, and try to make some money at this because the equipment was just way too expensive oh. to do it just for ourselves. Yeah, so, we were going to do it for us and a couple of buddies, and then we're like, no, we're just going to have to open this up. And then, Ta -da, the black. So, so what would you guys get the equipment? Did you have to take outside jobs for like different non-comic? We, well, we, 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 we were still working outside jobs for the first little bit, and then I, I quit mine about six months in um, because they, it, it was working. We, you know, we, were, we were getting orders in, and Thomas quit here a little while later. Um, now, do you mean, did we get other things to the presses? Yeah, other like, other like venues or things like that. No, we, no, 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 we didn't we did, we did, we did exclusively comics from the beginning. And we, we've printed some oddball stuff. Every now and again, we'll get like a, you know, a, a telephone directory yeah, or yeah, something. A New York Borough guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we'll print whatever <laughs> they you print, but we specifically said we're printing comics, so that's why we don't have a lot of crazy paper types in this. We, right. we just have a few paper types because yeah. that's all we want to print is comics. And so the, uh, but yeah, so no, we really didn't try to. That's great. No, we have, you know, there's always somebody saying, can you print on some plastic? This and I mean, the press was probably will do it, but we're like, no, it's not our thing. No, I mean, there's people out there to do that. We're not a full. Yeah, we, we we make no bones about the fact that we're we're a specialty shop. You yeah, know, we're not a full service printer. We, by design, we've got a very limited menu of options. Right. Very limited papers because you got to buy a lot of, a lot of paper. Paper. Yeah, because we're trying to serve, trying to keep the prices down as much as we can. So it's like very same to get the papers to do all this other crazy stuff. You just have to buy so much of it to, to keep the prices down. So that we just don't do it. Wait, <coughs> okay, uh, actually, that's actually some wonderful information there. Uh, let's open up to those audience questions while we have some few minutes left. Don't be shy. Raise your hand. <laughs> raise your hand. Or just call it out. There you go. You said raise your hand. I'm still trying to think of an actual question. <laughs> oh. that's, that's the problem. Like, there's things I want to ask because I really want to do this. There's, I have ideas. How do you so actually are you a writer get or artist? Or? Artist. I, okay. I love the comic book style, but I, I've never been able to find a writer to like really, like I have these ideas. I need someone to help me flush it out. I've never been able to like find that match. Good question. Right. So, so ask your question. So, I mean, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you match make, make in this business? I mean, there are people like him who are, or you know, people like me. I'm a writer looking for artists. These are there you go. Like, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Y'all are done. There's a book. There we go. Well, <laughs> oh, that's the thing is, I have a, a handful of writer friends, but. They want to go in a complete different direction than what I want to with this stuff. I was like, I don't want to draw that. I want this fine tuned. Like I, I have blocks, so I have, I have illustrations. I don't have the full comic. Um, have you thought about writing it yourself? I mean, you could, and if you have the ideas, I mean, get a, a book on how to write a screenplay or things like that. Uh, there are certain ways you can I've learn been, the craft. Been, yeah, I've been working on that. Like, I don't know why I can't write, but. It kills. <laughs> it takes me at least a week to write 500 words. Okay, that's it, okay. It, that's kills, okay. That's it okay. kills me. So one thing that I did was I was actually trying to get arts. I wanted to be an artist. You know, I was submitting to DC and Marvel and everything. I just was never quite getting. I get like a little short story here and there, but nothing was really gelling. So that's why I decided to kind of do my own book, the Amber Adams thing. And I'm not a writer, and it probably shows. But I mean, I think I did a decent job. Um, I learned a lot, and I mean that's. Just like anything, trial and error, you gotta learn how to do it. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I did my own thing, and you know, I, it did sell a million copies, but man, I feel pretty good that I put a book out, you know what I mean? And when somebody comes up to me in the show and brings up those first versions of Amber Adams, man, I, I can sign Dr. Who stuff all day, but when somebody brings up that thing that I created, no. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so what was one of those things that you learned in trial and error on the way? Something that surprised you or something that, that kind of you, you didn't know just kind of popped out? Um, I found that I could kind of continue, uh, continue writing, you know what I mean? And it's just, um, I wasn't trying to write in a certain style, um, but I found myself writing very fast 
pace in the sense of trying to write cliffhangers. So I was doing more smaller chapters and everything. So just my natural, I guess my natural style would be a little bit quicker storytelling than cliffhanger. And that was kind of what I was doing. And just, uh, I didn't know I had it in me, but I feel like, it, not that we want to pursue a full-time writing career, I think I could do it. I think I could, uh, you know, what's your own creation, you know, and you just feel a little bit more empowered by it, I guess. <laughs> What's the process to do a Kickstarter? I have another panel. I've done there is Yeah, I've done I've done three now, I think. Uh, the, the first fails spectacularly. Um, but but I've but I've I've I funded the you know the, the subsequent ones. Um, there's 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 tons of information on the Kickstarter webpage about how to get started, on that. and and there's there's no there's no shortage of, of videos on YouTube that people recommend. The 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 main thing about Kickstarter is comics are their from from what I've read comics are their most successful category. You're more likely to have a comics funded on Kickstarter than any other project. Indiegogo uh, is another good place too. But campaigns can be cool. You've got to be willing to bug everybody in your social media feed every day, repeatedly throughout the campaign. You know, and it, it's just it's it's a, it's a slog. It's just constantly saying, "Here's my here's my Kickstarter. Please take a look." You know, you got to go everywhere you can think of. You've got to talk to everybody. Networking. It's there's a lot of networking, and there's there's a there's a little formula that I that I noticed when. There's, there's L's and there's U's, okay? When you launch, you're going to see a spike on your graph. And then within a couple of days, it's going to start dropping. And then there's a period where you're flat. And the question is, am I an L or am I a U? <laughs> is it going to start coming back up? If it starts coming back up, you're going to make it. If it doesn't start coming back up, you're probably not. So you can't you can't be in that flat line very long. You've got to start you know you got to start trying to pull yourself out of it quick. Um, or the thing that we've seen a lot of the Kickstarter folks do they they put their goal really low so that way they you know will hit it and get the money and then still keep pushing it hoping that they're going to get that spike at the end. That 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 can work, but there's there's uh, there's 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 liabilities with that too. Because people look at a real low goal, <laughs> and then they just stop. and they well they, they they wonder well you know is this any why do yeah. they why, 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 why do they only need two hundred dollars what am I bidding on yeah um, so, a track record to yeah so there, there's 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 an art to picking you know yeah. to picking your amount I mean have you done it you you, you, you don't want, you don't want to um, go too low uh, slightly involved like I didn't write it but I, I was you were part of it yeah but you also don't want to. You probably shouldn't ask for what it's worth. <laughs> if you ask for what it's worth, it's probably going to be a, you know, a goal that's going to look unrealistic. So, you know, decide what's the minimum amount that I would be happy. I mean, are you trying to go for just to get the, the money to get printed, or are you trying to? Yeah, it's like ideally, I'd like to pay myself fifty thousand dollars a year and take a year to do this. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be nice, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I had a couple friends do it though too, and like you're saying, I just felt like it took a lot of energy and time, just beyond the actual physical work of creating whatever you're going to create. You know, just even talking with the people when you get to the end and just packaging and address labels and sending out the books. I mean, when you get a thousand orders or something. I know a company that sends out. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, so. that's us. We do that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, every day. Yeah. I'll, I'll add, I just, I just had a successful Kickstarter for my first comic. Um, yeah, so, uh, and so, um, generating a mailing list of uh, friends and family, that helps. Um, he's like, absolutely right, you will plateau, and you will freak out while you watch yeah, the plateau. Like, no, no, no. The other thing I can give, the only other advice I can give is make realistic rewards. Don't, don't do t-shirts or anything that's extra cost, just right. keep it simple, and I mean that. Don't, and don't, don't kill your, if, if you're successful, don't undo all your success with your stretch goals. I see people do this all the time. You know, they think, oh, I've made it, so now I can do hard covers. Well, you just, you know. Yeah, you just kill it all. Right, right. You just kill it, you know. Um, and be careful of what you're chipping out. All of a sudden, you're going to ship out a, you know, a floppy comic that's, that's you know, that's going to fit in just a small envelope, and then you're going to send out, you know, 11, 11 by 17, 17 posters. Now you're costing yeah. $4 or $5 more. And sure. Yeah, they're going to call you 
<laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and you, which yeah. now you've got to have, you know, either a big box or a separate oh, package yeah. with tons of yeah. Yeah. So or just so what you package the shipment out. Think about, you know, everything that's going to fit, if it's a floppy comic, you know what I'm talking about, just a regular standard comic, just think of whatever your things that you're going to add to it can fit in that package. You know, if it's, you want to do prints, Stickers. that's fine. Yeah. Sticker, you know, things that will just or still do fit a, in that do package. a backing board size print. Right. Yeah. Because then that, you, you just drop that, that in the same comics package. and you're more shipping costs. Right. So, so you guys have a question back to do from, like if somebody does a Kickstarter and they say I'm going to go through the brand and then you guys would handle it from the whole process once it's funded and you give us the, uh, the list, uh, we... I, I, I wish people would come That's to us first <laughs> so that we can tell them what's realistic and what's not realistic. Yeah. Okay. Time yeah. the because we get a lot of rewards after the fact where we're like, you realize you're going to have to pay shipping three times on this. We'll get the question in the back here real quick. I, I just Googled y'all, so you're kablam. Kablam. <laughs> so, uh, gee, if I draw and I write, yeah. and I want to make it easy for everybody, yeah. what size do you want to see? <laughs> if you go on there under the... Does it say... Does it, there's some templates. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it, you're, it's all here. It's, we try to make I, it as simple as possible. Okay. For me, really just a personal preference. I'm a, I'm a big fan of just the traditional comic size. You know, okay. Two to three, or three to two ratio. Three high, two wide. That ratio is pretty much going to get you through to a standard size, no matter what size you produce it at originally. Okay. Yeah. And traditionally, comic book art is done on 11 by 17 paper. Does that shrinks down perfectly to fit in the comic book? Oh, yeah. So if, if I did something larger so that I could work all the detail in for my little yeah. neurotic. Compulsive heart. And you can actually find uh, <laughs> there are companies that make pre-printed comic pages that have everything ruled out to the right and size. I, I, I've, I've seen them, of course, but you know, so shrink that down to the standard yeah. comic yeah. book size, so it'll you have. Just, or you know, you, you can download one of our templates and blow it up to the size you want, line off your paper, and then you know when it shrinks down, it's going to be it's going to be perfectly in the yeah. specification. Yeah, Barry and I are up at the, you know, on the third row up there. We've got all our sample stuff up yeah. there. You can oh, anybody come by. We'll, third we'll, floor? Yeah. And, and, and then I have to just go to conventions, what? right? After, if I print stuff, then I just have to beat the pavement, pretty um, much. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Um, the, what I was mentioning earlier about economies of scale pretty much precludes using us if you're planning to take your book to the, to the direct comics market. Because you know, Diamond's going to pay you, you know, at best forty cents on the dollar, and if you pay our printing cost, you're going to have exactly nothing left. <laughs> you don't get anything that, that you get from them. So well, sure, you're you're not marketing it; you're printing it, right? Yeah. So, and, and for for any independent publisher today, you know, there was there was a time in the in the in the early '90s when this was started that you could you could you could take an independent comic book to the distributors. And you could probably get enough orders, you know, to, to cover the cost of the print run, at least for the first issue or two. Um, those days are largely gone now. You know. uh, independent publishers are not as welcomed, you know, in the, in the direct sales market as they used to be. I think it I think it tracks back more you know, to, to the distributor wars of the nineties from the weeds. Oh we have a question over here. So I'm willing to write my own story and draw my own comic. Should I wait until the script is completely done before I start drawing? Yes. <laughs> I, I, other people may disagree with me on that, but you know, it, you know, it's there's it, think think about an animated movie. There's a reason why they storyboard that to the nth degree before the animators start working. It's because if you get to the end and you go, oh, you know, what we should have done in the beginning. My main guy. Then you got to figure girl. everything out. <laughs> so I, I would, I'd never advocate starting, you know, drawing a comic until you've got it, you know, thumbnailed out and you know exactly. Oh, that's what those writer out. folks say. Yeah. Otherwise, you're wrong. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to waste, you don't want to waste your artist time, and you don't want to make them start over. Yeah. Well, unnecessary. And that was one of the things I've done. I've written the whole, my two creator books, I've written the whole thing, and long way, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can change that or redirect that or whatever. So, kind of, kind of clear, I don't waste time, you know, I'm very busy, so I don't waste time, you know, like, oh, if you're in control, you're 10 pages wrong or whatever. So, yeah, I think uh, you can't go wrong with writing the script first. That is a great way to do it. But, you know, comic books are words and pictures, right? And uh, sometimes when you're doing a scene, and I've, I've 
uh, encountered this when doing uh, when drawing scripts written by other guys. I come to a scene, it's like, wow, this should be four pages, and they had it all squeezed into one page. And there's a certain accordion effect that happens in a story when you're working on it. So well, the way I actually do my stories, I write a flow chart of everything I want to happen. And then if, I, if I'm doing, say, a 22-page comic book, I go through it and I assign, okay, this deserves one page, this gets three pages, this gets a half page, and then, you know, that is my structure. And sometimes, uh, if I don't have the exact words, I can start drawing from that. But just having that, that template of like knowing where things happen uh, helps me. Because I actually have a lot of comic books where, like say, the last two pages have like 15 panels on each page because they didn't plan everything out. And they're like, oh, shucks, we got to get this in. And they just, so if you do at least a flow chart, that'll help. But like I said, you can't go wrong with writing a script first. Well, and, and keep in mind too that that that, that there, is, there is no strict formula for what a, for what a written comic is. Okay. You know, a, a, a comic exists when it all comes together, when, when the words and the pictures come together. So, your story can be fully written if it's just a plot. You know, you don't have to do a, a full panel-to-panel -panel script for your comic to be written. You know, it can be like Joe said, it can be a, it can be a flow chart. It can be a, it can be a, a very loose plot. As long as you've got all the elements there and you know exactly, you know, where it's going and where it's going to end up and you're not wasting your artist's time or wasting your time. Other questions? Oh, right here. And so, um, so I can write and I can draw, but normally I just like, draw the pencil, so I know, uh, so do, uh, like, what, what process would I need to do to get it inked and colored and all of that? But it, it depends really kind of what you want it to look like. And you know, there's plenty of books out there that are just pencil books. Yeah, I was going to say just watercolor books or like traditionally with comic books, uh, you ended up with an inker and a colorist and the whole assembly line thing because of the way comic books are printed. But today, uh, everything that ends up on the page has to get scanned in or is created on a computer. So if you only want to work in pencil, you can scan it, and if it shows up, you know, if you can get a good scan of a pencil drawing. You can do a whole comic book that way. Oh, it's, okay. It depends on what yeah. you want to, to, to yeah. what you want to produce in the end. You know, in, in, now we would hope that you might would come to us to print it. But if you did, you want to you know, we can handle we can handle printing pencil look and stuff or watercolor drawings. You know, we print all kind of stuff, so, and we get all kinds of stuff from. That's actually the question I was going to ask. So in her case, if she did the pencils and she didn't have a scanner, did she send it to you guys? Mm -hmm. Do you we, scan? No. Okay. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to get yeah. verification. No, no, so. we, 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 need, we need everything to be print ready. Print ready. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we, don't, we don't do any pre, pre press work we, it, other than make sure all the pages are in order. And we try to make sure that everything, because we don't know what your story is yeah, about. We're, we're going to run a pre flight on it to make sure that, that you're uh, that, you, that you've got, you know, needs some margins where they're supposed to be, and we'll let you know if, you know, if that's not yeah. the case, and we'll, we, we won't, we won't knowingly print it if it's not, it's not going to work. And how do I know that you can't spell, and you're just trying to be funny with the words and stuff, you know, so we, we just, we, we're, we're not the editor. Are you ever tempted to say, hey, this is spelled really awfully, you know, this is, you know, we, I, we, I did that a couple of times when we first started, and, and, <laughs> and I was too much to not to do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> So, if we see something that we go, this this is not this is something that's odd. And it will will Art Jennifer ask you. Do you want to tell me she's very she uh yeah we we get in trouble trying to correct people. And I I I'm a bit picker on that kind of stuff. I'll see stuff and I try to you know I think you know this way it should be centered a little bit more. And there's like no, it didn't leave it the way it is. That's what they wanted it, and that was wrong. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I'm really bad at following directions. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think, trying to put what I think the book should, you know, be structured, look, you know, on the screen, right, rather than you know, just they sent it that way. Usually, you know, get one copy printed, and you know, and if it's something mess up, you'll see it and fix it the next time when you make a reorder. Oh, uh, we're. So let's wrap it up. I'm gonna get uh, your question. And uh, yeah, uh, do you, in your experience, find that it usually ends up more profitable to go for like a higher quality comic that ends up costing more and you probably reach less people, or go for 
like the old like eighties super cheap um, comics that more people can afford. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by yeah. super cheap. What, what, like newsprint I, I, versus like a newsprint quality. Yeah, versus, yeah. Like, 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 like I actually just found out not too long ago that there's a company called Alterna doing comics for like two bucks a pop or something. Using if, the old. If, super you, if you can find, I, I don't know for sure. This is my always been my suspicion with them. If you can find uh, a, a, an, an old web press. <laughs> that, a, that a print shop owns, and they've got a mountain of leftover newsprint, you could probably get a pretty cheap deal. Um, I can buy really nice glossy paper cheaper than I can buy newsprint. Yeah, the newsprint is not the cheaper alternative that most people think it is. Plus, it's truly terrible. <laughs> you know, we, I mean, I, I, love, I love my comics from the, from the bronze and the silver age. I treasure them. I love that smell. Mold. But that's awful. Paper. You know, if you if you ever see some of those comics that have been that have been reproduced on nicer paper, and you see all the detail that you never saw on the newsprint, then you understand that newsprint is awful. And it really bad. Yeah. Uh, another uh, facet of, of you know how how cheap to print your book. Um, I did a book with Image Comics a couple of years ago that uh, like I was planning my comic books to be. Uh, 32 pages with you know a full color cover, and they kind of downgraded the way they think, did things to have 28 pages of content with like the last you know four pages being the you know front cover, back cover, and inside covers. So it was basically it was still a 32 page comic book, but it just didn't have a cover printed on the outside, and the entire book was printed on cover stock, thin cover stock. And nobody ever complained about that, but I hated it. It felt too thin and flimsy to me. And it cost, you know, a little bit more to have, you know, a 32-page comic book printed with the cover on the outside. But just personally, I like that product better. I like, I like the feel of it. So it's just like a inside self-cover. Yes. Yeah. So we, 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 we offer that. Well, we're uh, we're about to wrap up. So first of all, I want to thank our guest. Everybody, give it a hand. Uh, I, I do want to. I, I do want to leave you guys. Any, any final thoughts? Any anything in the next three minutes? Anything you want to add? Support creator on books. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I would say if you have something, uh, an idea, a concept you want to get out there, don't let anybody tell you no. Um, There's so many success stories that you know. Uh, you look at the guys who did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They would not have been able to get a job in mainstream comic books. But they went and did their own thing, and they became gazillionaires. So, so if an editor says you stink, you can't do it, say I'm gonna do it on my own, and you know, don't let anybody stop. Can if y'all can I get a picture of you with Dawn? <laughs> sure. Yes, we can. Yes, absolutely. And if y'all have any other questions about the actual printing, you know, you don't have to use the lamp if you don't want. We want. But we'll, 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 we'll have to talk to you. We got some samples up there too. I think we're all up on the third floor, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, right? We're all up there, floor, so definitely go check them out. And buy their stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely buy their stuff. I mean, we all have our own self published books too. Everybody, give them a hand. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for listening to the Mobcast Network.